Let's talk about slash chords, and no, not chords that this guy uses, but these. Before I get into this, hit the subscription button and give this video a like. It really helps the channel out. I'm also available for some private lessons at the moment if you want to up your prog and composition game. A slash chord is a chord that has a different bass note than the letter name of that chord. For example, if a D major chord had any bass note other than a D, it would be indicated with a slash. In a slash chord, the chord is indicated left of the slash and the bass note is indicated right of the slash. D slash F sharp is a D major chord with F sharp in the bass. One important thing to talk about here are chord inversions. Chord inversions are slash chords, but slash chords don't have to be chord inversions. An inverted chord is a chord that doesn't have the root note in the bass, but instead uses another note that comes from that chord in the bass. D major has the notes D, F sharp, and A. If D is in the bass, it's in root position, and it's just called a D major chord. If the F sharp or the third is in the bass, it's called a first inversion D major chord. And if the A or fifth is in the bass, it's a second inversion D major chord. In first inversion, the D major chord has an F sharp in the bass, which can also be written as a slash chord D slash F sharp. So every inverted chord is also a slash chord because the slash is just telling you that the chord has a different bass note from the root. But slash chords don't have to be inversions. I can put any note in the bass while keeping the same chord above D over G, for example, or D over B flat, or D over C. These are all still slash chords, but they aren't inversions because the bass notes aren't part of the D major chord. Slash chords can be done with any extended chord as well. I'm focusing on basic major and minor triads as I think that's the best place to start to get a handle on these, but you can have slash chords with major 7 chords or dominant 13 chords or minor major 7 chords, any type of extended chord. That's how you build slash chords, but where can we use these chords? I think it's best to first explore the sounds that slash chords can create. Here's that D major chord, and I'll throw every chromatic bass note under it so you can hear how each of these sound. When we hear chords, our ears are listening bottom up, meaning we hear these chords in relationship to the bass note that's playing. So while the chord didn't change at all, our perception of the sound changes with each new bass note. And this is super powerful. By simply shifting the bass note, a chord can create a whole new emotion in the music. D over F sharp sounds hopeful and uplifting, while D over B flat sounds mysterious and unsettling. So it's worth diving into the sound of all of these different slash chords. One thing to note is that some of these slash chords can go by a different name. D over B, for example, is just a B minor 7, and you would basically never see it written as D over B. So some of these slash chords might end up with a different name theoretically, but the sound of them is what's most important. Let's use these in some actual chord progressions. Here's the most basic progression possible, the 1, 5, 6, 4 pop chord loop. In G, that would be G, D, E minor, and C. Let's change the D to a D slash F sharp. This creates a stepwise bass line that goes G, F sharp, E. Inversions are often used like this to make simple bass lines that jump around a little bit less. I can add even more inversions in to do this even more. So we have G, D over F sharp, E minor, E minor over B, to C, to C over E, to D over F sharp, to G. This bass line has more movement, and it also feels less jagged as it's moving into each new chord from either a scale tone above or below. I'm going to take this inversion idea a step further. I'm going to invert every single one of these chords. G over B, D over A, E minor over B, and C over G. This is obviously the same chord progression, but it has a much less resolved and straightforward sound. 
Next, I'm gonna go away from inversions and use bass notes from outside of the chords, but I'm gonna keep all of these in G major. G over A, D over G, E minor over C, which is really a C major seven, and C over D. These same four pop chords now sound like some kind of modern neo soul style jazz just by changing the bass notes, and I haven't even left the key of G. If I decide to leave the key with the bass note, I can take this even further. Check out this one. It's G over B, D over C, E minor over C sharp, and C over D. Notice the chromatic bass line here. Very cool. One more example with this progression. G over E flat, D over B flat, E minor over C, and C over A flat. Here the bass notes are following a one, five, six, four progression, but in the key of E flat major. This obviously sounds out and very dissonant, but I've taken this progression from this to this. by only changing bass notes and using slash chords. Let's look at some examples of this in actual music. I'll be using my own songs here just to keep the copyright overlords at bay, but these techniques happen in all kinds of music. These first few examples specifically use chord inversions, and honestly that's the most common use of slash chords. In the chorus of the fourth wall, the progression is G minor nine, B flat add nine, D minor over F, C minor over E flat, C minor, A flat add nine, in A flat minor. The two first inversion chords here make for a nice descending bass line and help to color up a fairly basic minor progression. In the chorus of the Great Stereopticon, the chord progression is A minor, D minor over F, G, and D over F sharp. Once again, a couple of first inversion chords add some color, and they also bring a little chromatic movement in the bass. This section from the 60 odd meters and 60 seconds video I put together goes as follows. G minor, F sharp major, F minor, A over E, D minor, A over C sharp, A minor over C, A flat over C, and B major. Here I'm using these inversions to basically move down chromatically and connect a bunch of unrelated major and minor chords together. Here are a few examples that use slash chords that aren't inversions. The bridge of broken epistemology goes A major 7 sharp 11, F sharp minor 6 9, A flat over B flat, and A flat major 7. And then the second time through that last chord is C over A flat. The C over A flat adds a darkness to the end of this section, and it's an example of how exploring some of these slash chord sounds can lead to unusual progressions. The progression from the A sections of Anamorphosis have a couple of extended slash chords, B flat major 13 over A, and F add 9 over D flat.
And these are really happening because of the bass movement into the following chords, which are B flat 6 9 and E flat 6 9. And this is an example of using some of these slash chords in a much more involved jazz style progression. One last way that slash chords appear that's very common is through pedal point. Pedal point is a musical device where a note remains static, usually in the bass. This allows for harmonic exploration above that pedal and can also add tension to the music. The first verse of the fourth wall pedals on a low G while the harmony shifts on top of it. It moves between G minor and G major and features a few slash chords including E flat major 7 over G and C over G. And these are happening because of that static bass note. Slash chords can also happen by pedaling a chord on top and moving the bass around. But usually the pedal happens in the bass. One last example here, this is from a crazy fusion thing that I put together a few years back. Here I use a few pedaled low notes to create some dissonant slash chords. We have E over A, D over A, and D flat over A, and C over G, B flat over G, and A over G. These are pretty messed up sounding, especially that D flat over A, but the pedal is helping to connect them together. Slash chords and inversions are incredibly useful for building more interesting chords and progressions. They can also dramatically change the way a musical passage feels and the emotion behind it. Implementing some of these sounds into my own music has been very effective. This is an idea that's worth exploring. If you enjoyed this lesson and you want some more prog goodness, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like, comment, share, all of that. Till next time. Stay proggy.